presenter here for our webinar. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for that kind introduction. Thank you all for coming. Um, we titled this talk, What's Happening in the Digital Accessibility Legal Space? I want to say two things about the title slide, which also includes my name, uh, CIDI's title, the date, and my Twitter handle, which is LF Legal. I want to say something about LF Legal besides the fact that Twitter is a great place to keep up with what's happening in the digital accessibility space generally and the digital accessibility legal space in particular. LF Legal has sort of become my brand. Some people think it's actually my name. And the reason that happened was because in 2008, some of you probably have heard this story, when I was getting my website, I was going to be Lainey Feingold. Dot com and a blind friend of mine said no one's going to be able to spell Laney no one's going to be able to spell fine gold and your email will not fit on a line of braille on your business card and this person Josh Mealy who many of you know he's a uh, inventor and a designer and uh, all around brilliant guy in the digital space he said, why don't you be LF legal? It'll fit on a line of Braille. And that I'm sharing on the title slide to remember that in the legal space, working with, listening to, participating with people with disabilities is key to success. I mean, I work for myself out of my house, never thought about having a brand. And now because of involvement of a blind friend, I have this great brand. Um, so the law tends to, you know, push the people aside. And especially with all this focus now on lawsuits, which we'll talk about in a bit, the real disabled people who need accessibility kind of get shoved aside for this idea. How many lawsuits are there? What industries are they in? So it's really important. And I hope one of the takeaways here is to never forget that digital accessibility is about people. Um, I have a picture on the title slide, which is from the Disability Inn, which is a business-to-business -business nonprofit. Um, I've done some work for them. It's a great organization, and they have a great set of free downloadable images of real people with disabilities doing real work. So I invite you to look into that for your presentations. Um, it's just another reminder about this whole thing. We're all here about people. So um, one thing I want to start out with, words matter. And nothing in this webinar is legal advice. Um, when I do this live, I make everybody repeat that. Nothing Laney is saying is legal advice. This is general information. If you need to have, um, if you have a particular issue, either as an advocate or if you're a business, got a lawsuit, specific questions, you really need to talk to an ADA legal expert. Another thing I want to say about words, um, in this presentation, I will interchangeably use uh, people with disabilities and disabled people. And the reason for that is because some people in the community who are disabled prefer using disabled as an adjective, and other people prefer the people first language. So when I'm engaged with an individual person, of course, I want to know what their preference is and address them accordingly. But in a presentation with a lot of people, I interchange them. And if you're not familiar with this issue, I know for a long time, uh, people first language was considered the gold standard. So if you're not familiar with the growing, um, I would call it a growing movement to say disabled people, autistic people, um, I invite you just put into Google uh, person first versus identity first, which is kind of a not so accurate shorthand for that whole topic. But You'll find some great articles written by disabled advocates, and so I encourage you for that. Um, to answer the questions in the chat, yes, I will put in the link to the Disability in once we're slowed down a little. I'll put in the link where you can find the pictures. But the organization is disabilityin.org, and in the resources, they have the images. Um, okay, so... What are the goals of this webinar, besides giving you an update on what's happening in the legal space? Uh, first of all, I want to apologize that this particular platform does not allow for animation from the slides. So what was supposed to happen is for you to see the shark. 
And sometimes I even play the soundtrack from Jaws, which is not playing now, um, to say that so much of the legal space is infected by fear. People are afraid of getting sued. They're afraid when they get a demand letter. Legal departments are afraid of putting out information about accessibility because they might get sued if they say something that's not 100% good. There is a lot of fear in the space. And if there was an animation, on top of the shark would come the red X. But you're seeing it together, which is kind of good, too, because I really have a goal here of sharing what's happening in the legal space in a way that you can think of the law as a positive motivator, something that's good, something that you want to do that doesn't engender fear. And the reason I have a picture of a cell phone in a jean pocket is because I really think the law is all of ours and that we can all put the law in the pocket, put the law in our own pockets. Um, I know there's many roles. There's 134 people listening live today, and there's over 250 who signed up. Many, many different roles um, involved in accessibility. Whatever your role is, I think that we need to be familiar with the legal vocabulary in a way that doesn't scare people and that we can use it to advance our goals, get the financial resources from our organizations, convince our higher-ups, motivate our teams. So those are those are my my big goals for this. Um, so I said words matter at the beginning. Probably the most important words in this presentation are what is digital accessibility? And so real briefly, I want to say that digital is more than websites. One of the problems with so much focus on the legal space is most of the lawsuits are about websites. And then people feel, oh, to comply with the law, I just have to like make sure my website is, you know, meets WCAG 2.1 or whatever. Um, but digital accessibility, digital is a lot more than websites. And I left, I listed just a few things up here employee software, applicant software, telephony, which is a word I recently learned. I called it telephone systems, but someone said oh, telephony is the new word. So forgive me for not really a plain language. Uh, benefit portals, training, training programs, email systems, applications. Most of the law suits we'll talk about in a bit are focused on primarily the websites, growing number for apps, but all these types of digital products and services have been the subject of some lawsuits. And just take a minute or jot down on your notes to think later, like what kind of digital are you involved with? Education systems, learning platforms, uh, in-classroom uh, devices for students to ask questions or register information or respond to a survey. Um, just so many things that whatever you're in, I don't really like the word industry, whatever work you are doing, whatever your space is, um, just think about all the ways in which digital is part of the work, part of the education, part of the social, part of the public. So that's digital. Accessibility, um, you know, there's a lot of definitions. We'll talk about various things. But at its core, I think it's really important to remember that accessibility is a quality of technology that allows people with all kinds of disabilities to fully and independently use that technology, whatever their role, as students, professors, applicants, employees, consumers, creators. Again, when you're at just the lawsuits through a narrow lens. You know, there's a lot of people who talk and write and give good information about the number of lawsuits, the industries affected, the type of cases. It's good to know. I'm not going to, this is not a webinar where we're going to focus on, on those particular metrics. Um, but it's just important to remember what we're talking about when we talk about the law of digital accessibility. It's everything digital, so people with disabilities can use it, whether they see a screen or listen to audio, whether we can hear audio or whether we need captions, whether we have cognitive disabilities and need more time than a developer may think we do 
to complete a task online or whether we can't handle flashing content. All these things, accessibility, access. So when we talk about digital accessibility legal space, we're talking about that kind of digital accessibility. So why is the law part of this to begin with? Why is, why is the law part of this? The law is part of it because accessibility is a human right of disabled people. Accessibility is a civil right. Talking about putting the law in your pocket, that is one thing that should go in all our pockets whenever we're talking about this issue. Um, I have this illustrated with a picture from a demonstration in the run-up to the Americans with Disabilities Act. Um, there are disabled people in a street um, marching with a big sign, Injustice Anywhere is a Threat to Justice Everywhere, uh, which is a Martin Luther King Jr. quote. And the reason the law is in this space is this one this one slide, because accessibility is a human right of, dis of disabled people. So why do we say that? It's because accessibility is about participation. Think of everything that happens in your school, in your government agency, in your private sector, in your whatever, whatever your work is that brought you to this seminar. Um, can people with disabilities participate without digital accessibility? You will undoubtedly find that the answer is no. And that's why accessibility is a civil right. Accessibility is a right to information. You know, we're in the, I don't know if we're in the information age or the post-information age, but information is digital everywhere. So accessibility is integral to the right to information. And security and privacy. Accessibility is really core to security and privacy. I have a slide illustrated with a picture of ingestibles. Um, some of you may have seen this slide before. It's really one of my favorite pictures. Um, there's three components of the image. There's little green that look like pills that you actually swallow, but they're little computer computers. I don't know what the technical word for it is. And it's you swallow it. It's in your own body. It sends information to the patch which is also in the image, and then that patch sends information to the mobile app, which is also in the image, and you can see on the app, there's data about when you took your medications, four of four yesterday. So we're talking about technology that gives information about your own body. What could be more private? What could be more about security than what is happening inside your own body, whether you took medication yesterday or didn't? It also gives your weight, your blood pressure, things like that. So in some ways, this could think like an edge case, but think about the work you do. In any time digital is not accessible, people with disabilities have to ask for help and security privacy is broken. So whether it's signing up for courses, whether it's purchasing something, whether it's healthcare information, financial information, I think if you look at the particular information and uh, services you're providing and think about, hmm, do we really want someone to have to ask for help because it's not independently usable? You'll come up with a privacy or a security aspect to accessibility. So these are all the reasons why accessibility is considered in, uh, a civil right or human right. In most countries outside of the U.S., people use human right. So I, for this purpose, it's interchangeable, civil rights or human rights. Um, and these are values that are baked into laws. So I have a picture of an unbaked apple pie here um, with the apples. And the apples are kind of the civil rights values in this metaphor. Um, and the apple pie is not baked yet because you need the laws, you need the laws to actually, and the enforcement of those laws to bake in the pies. But all these laws that people get afraid of, oh my God, ADA, you know, we're going to get sued, or this or that, these are civil rights laws designed to protect the rights of people with disabilities to participate in today's world. So to me, that's nothing to be afraid of, it's something to celebrate. Um, so well, you can find civil rights in these types of laws. I have just a list here. We could have a whole day long seminar on this. Um, which maybe we'll have an opportunity to do one day. But for now, um, these are some of the laws that talk about digital accessibility that are being used to ensure accessibility 
that really are at their core civil rights laws. Of course, first and foremost in the United States is the Americans with Disabilities Act. 